Yeah, if there's one thing I could change, Stan, I would have been to know what you knew sooner. You know, in my yeah. late 20s and 30s, I think I would have been a lot stronger, yeah, a lot faster. 100%. Yep. By far, if I could look back at my career, I'd say it's the 10 years that I, I didn't know anything about nutrition or thought I did. You don't grow in the gym, right? All we're doing here is break down muscle tissue. So I've always said that my success was built outside the gym, my discipline from eating and sleeping. And I've beat that drum so loud that everybody here has probably heard it a million times. But uh, with respect to people who are trying to gain mass, I actually bring the protein down a little bit and keep fats under control and I drive carbs as high as I can get them. Hofthor's eating, what is it, 1,200 grams, probably 5,000 calories worth of just white rice a day. <laughs> and that's the way carbs are anabolic. I won't go into you know too deep about that, but uh, lifters, bodybuilders in particular, um, people you know, and powerlifting you don't use quite as much. But like Matt said, most of the time we should be doing some hypertrophy, you know, fives in there, uh, the the ones and threes, ones and twos is really for you know the last eight weeks before competition. So that's a huge thing. Also, the biggest thing I want to get across for a lot of the big athletes that I work with, the, the power lifters and the strong men, just like you periodize your training, you, know, you can't lift heavy all year round, you shouldn't stay heavy all year round. So there are times at which you should be trying to eat as much as you can and doing as much volume as you can to build as much muscle as you can. But if you try and hold a heavy weight or accumulate body fat, which is a good thing for power lifting, that to be full uh, to be big, to be uh, water. to have plenty of water, all that's good for your strength. But eventually, a lot of the guys they end up getting uh, insulin resistance and fatty liver disease and metabolic syndrome, and then the, the nutrients just get partitioned into fat. So you got to resensitize yourself, just like you periodize your training and, and come down off of some of the heavy work. You want to bring your body weight down a little bit. Off the war was uh, he came down to 380 this year. Yeah. Over the winter, he was down to 380. He's back up to 445. And, and coming down to 380 resensitized his body. Sure, you lose a lot of strength. That's what we kind of got to get out of our head is that when I was competing in bodybuilding, I would lose 100 pounds or more on my bench. That could be pretty discouraging for a powerlifter. But then when I ramped myself back up for powerlifting, I was stronger than I was the previous time I was powerlifting. I was patient. I just kept repeating that cycle throughout my career. Even you hear that, patience? Yeah, that's pretty important. <laughs> Even like Klokov in Olympic lifting, his dad always made him do a lot of cardio in the off season, and he was frustrated because his weight, his, his strength would go down. But he built this huge gas tank so that when he started lifting heavy again, he recovered faster. You know, mass moves mass, and so I do encourage most of my athletes to gain weight <coughs> and not to constantly stay in a weight class. I'm not a big Wilkes fan, to be honest with you. Uh, but I wanted to gain good weight, and because mass moves mass, and so. Uh, I'm cautious about making sure that they're sensitive, they use uh, calories to drive workload, uh, use plenty of hypertrophy style training. Eddie Cohn only competed twice a year. And in between every powerlifting competition, he did bodybuilding at least twice a year. So that was the way he was able to go from 165 pound weight class up to 242 pound weight class. He didn't stay at 165. Like a lot of guys now, they just keep dieting down. And they want to be the strongest guy, at, you know, like I said to Larry Wheels one time, uh, the world's tallest midget. And he kept dieting down to 242. And I said, quit being a bitch. You know, come up to 275 and chase a real record. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody knows he beat my record. So <laughs> one time I probably should have shut up. <laughs> but, you know, the fact is, is that, that by being patient and looking at this long term and cycling your, your, your weight, uh, your strength training with your body weight, I think that eventually you just keep building more muscle. The bigger muscle is going to eventually be a stronger muscle. And I just want to see people be able to maximize their potential uh, if this is their passion. Uh, I started, I was 140 pounds in college. I couldn't bench 135. I had to take the, the 45 pound plates off and put the 35s on in front of all the frat boys. I still remember. It was, a, it was an emotional experience. <laughs> was many years of therapy over that. But, I want to get every one of those guys now. Like, you see that 606, huh? Yeah. <laughs> None of them ever benched over 400. Yeah. But, you know, but the way I get there, the way I used to get there many years ago was pizza, pasta, pancakes, gallon of milk a day. And I got fat and I had insulin resistance and I, you know, got fatter, not stronger. So I started learning over the years from, you know, many, many uh, runs at this that when you periodize your, your weight and you use 
and you're smart and you use the kinds of foods that, that like I do with Hofthor and the vertical diet is I, I get them their protein, but I stay away from the pizza, pasta, and pancakes. I drive mostly white rice for carbs to fuel the workload. Uh, and I stay away from the kinds of foods that make them fat and bloated. And I, I you know, I implement a reasonable calorie surplus. I'm, I'm not talking about 2,000 calories over your, your maintenance weight. I'm talking, you know, 500 is fine. You're not going to build muscle any faster with yeah. 1,500 calories than you are with 500 over your maintenance. Yeah, if there's one thing I could change, Stan, I would have been to know what you knew sooner. You know, in my yeah. late 20s and 30s, I think I would have been a lot stronger, yeah, a lot I, faster. A hundred percent. By far, if I could look back at my career, I'd say it's the 10 years that I, I didn't know anything about nutrition yeah. or thought I did. I did it purely by luck because I was bodybuilding and powerlifting. And so I would diet down for a bodybuilding show and then I would rebound up to a powerlifting meet. And every time I did that, I got a little bit stronger every single Smart. time. I just yeah. kept doing that. And then I find out later that's kind of how Eddie, you know, did his career and so I just I kind of backed into the equation, made the mistake, and then come to find out now with all the science that we have available that insulin sensitivity and nutrient partitioning is pretty darn important. Uh, and so, and I saw that in my blood test because you guys know I did blood tests every month for you know the last 12 years practically over 150 tests throughout my career. So I could see my blood sugars, I could see my HA1C, I could see my insulin levels and my triglycerides. I watched all that and how it responded to what weight I was and how much body fat I was carrying. I'm going to give you the tools to be healthier at 40 and above than you were at 20. This is everything that I wish that I knew if I was going to start fitness all over again. Pairing your meals, which saves you time and money, and using the foods, the kind that are the most nutrient dense. I'm trying to combat high blood pressure that I'm trying to drop 10 or 20 pounds off an individual quick. Both Stan and I have dominated the fitness industry, training world records, training special forces, and everybody under the sun for multiple goals. And I actually address the details with respect to sleep. Dramatic improvements in blood pressure over a very short period of time. We want to share all of this information with you. Science is showing us now that as long as you reach within about a rep or two of failure, yeah. you're going to maximize your benefit. We can substitute potatoes for rice occasionally. Exercising is great for many reasons, but losing weight is not one of them. This comprehensive series covers everything from injury prevention, to diet, to weightlifting, and so much more.